Hi, this is Lou, welcome to my channel and welcome to another Tuesday video where we have a little chat about kind of art theory and sketching and art supplies and all of those kind of things. So the project I want to do this week is uh, using gouache, so that'll be up on Friday. Uh, but in the meantime, it's been a while since I've played with gouache, so I thought I'd get it out and do some swatching and just testing things out. Partly to remind myself of how it works and partly to share with you kind of what I've learned about this. Now, it's important to say that I'm not an expert in this. Um, I've I got this set a couple of years ago and I've used it a few times. It's not been like day in, day out. So I thought I'd share a little bit about what I've learnt and some of the um, some of the things that I found out and some of the struggles that I've had as well, um, kind of coming from using watercolour and acrylics and then uh, switching to gouache. So I bought this set, which is the Winsor & Newton Designers gouache. It's the introductory set. It's got 10 tubes in it. Um, but as you can see, there's more than 10 in here because I've kind of filled it out with buying a few extras. I swatched out the uh, the colours that come in the set. Um, so there's these ones and then there's a black and a white as well. So there's a good range in there and you can mix pretty much anything from that. What I'm going to do today is, um, I think I'm just going to work with the primary colours. So I've got primary red, uh, one of these is primary yellow and that one is primary blue and then I've got white. I did buy an extra large tube of white because you do really go through it. And then in my sketchbook here I've sw I've um, made little circles um, and I'm going to do different types of swatching and just experiment with these and play with them and see what they do uh, in the different circles. Other than the paints, the uh, the setup here is pretty much what I would use for, for watercolour. I've got these little paper palettes um, but um, you can use any palette. Um, I've got my regular watercolour paint brushes. Uh, one thing I will say is that um, some of the watercolour brushes that I've used um, are a little bit too soft and they don't have enough kind of spring and um, they hold a bit too much water um, to use gouache and I found them kind of dragging and it was really hard to control. Uh, but these ones are quite springy and firm so they're okay. I've also got a couple of jars of water um, because this really makes the water really muddy. <laughs> so the gouache I've got here is uh, Winsor & Newton Designers gouache and this is a traditional gouache and there are there are two different types of... Uh, of uh, I'm going to get fed up of saying gouache um, but there's two different types. There's the uh, traditional gouache which is this um, and then there's an acrylic gouache and the, the difference is um, they kind of look very similar, the finished result looks very similar but the difference is that this is essentially like an opaque watercolour and it's water soluble even when it's dry so if you put it on a palette you can always wet it and kind of bring it back to life um, so you you can always reuse it um, and also on the page it dries down but then you've kind of limited in how you can layer over the top of it because uh, once you put colour on top it will re-wet the colour underneath and then you can end up kind of muddying your colours up a bit. Acrylic gouache uh, has an acrylic base and it's essentially like a matte acrylic paint um, and it dries flat um, and smooth like uh, like this gouache, but it doesn't have that um, feature of being able to re-wet it. Um, so if you put it on your palette and it dries, then uh, you'll be able to use it again. But it does have the benefit of it makes it easier to layer colours over one another, especially lights over darks. So um, because when you put down the paint on the page, once it's dry, it's not going to lift so you can paint uh, other colours over the top much more easily. So I'm going to mix up a nice plummy purple with these colours and then I'm going to max, uh, mix a little bit of white into it as well. So I'm just going to start by um, putting out a little bit of each colour on my palette. So let's have a nice swoosh of white and then we'll probably want a fair bit of the red and blue and then just a tiny little bit of the yellow. One thing I had to get used to with this was the idea of using more paint than I thought I needed because kind of coming from using watercolour, the idea of using that amount of paint, I mean like that could be a whole like a pan of watercolour there um, and I would expect that to last for years, not just for painting one page. So actually I'm using an awful lot more um, of this 
than I was used to and I was kept feeling like I was wasting it. So um, I just had to get over that really um, because I kept not mixing up enough uh, as much as I needed. I'm going to start with the white. Let's get a nice splodge of that down there, maybe not quite that much. Another reason I felt like I was wasting paint was because if I dip my white now into any of those colours, it was just really going to contaminate it. So I really need to wash my brush, but I can see that there's a huge amount of paint still on there. So I just have to get used to the idea that to do it properly, I'm going to end up wasting some paint. Get some of that blue in there. And shall I just go into the red? Oh, right. So I've mixed those colours. The only water that I put on my brush was what I used to uh, to, to wash the brush there. Um, I'm going to have to do it again. I'm going to pick up a little bit more red and tiny bit of the yellow just to just to neutralize it and mix all that color in together blue all right that's kind of the color that i want so i'm going to start with this color without really adding any more water into it and just see what happens when I use it quite thickly. So I've got um, a little column down here um, and this is my um, adding water column. So I'm going to start at the top and just paint half a circle with this and actually it's not bad. It didn't really need very much water at all to loosen it up and make it a nice kind of creamy consistency. So I'm just going to dip my brush in the water again, mix it in and just keep painting down the page with different consistencies of this paint. That's quite nice. So a little bit more water and the paint it doesn't really flow, it just um, it just kind of sits more um, evenly on the page. Another brush full of water, I'm going to do this one here. And that's still okay, that's still quite nice. Very little difference between those two. Another brush full of water into that. We'll do this one here. And now I'm starting to see it become a little bit more transparent. So it's behaving a little bit more like watercolour. But it's not really lightening very much. A bit more water. And you'll see this one looks a lot more like watercolour. It's kind of, um, it's, it's settling in different patches on the page. You can see the grain of the paper through it. It's looking a little bit more transparent. One last mix of water into there. And actually these are going to blend together. So we are getting lighter and lighter as we go down the page. So I'm going to try the same thing again. I'm going to start with my um, kind of colour at the top, but then I'm going to add more white to it as I go down. Let's start off this one without putting any white in it at all. We'll just start with 
those colours mixed together. And then we'll add the white as we go down. So I don't know if you can see that, but um, because we haven't got the white in there, it's it's a little bit more um, transparent on the page. The white definitely makes it more opaque. So let's add a little bit of white into it. Just the tiniest bit of water to make it move. And that is looking a lot more opaque. It's also looking a little cooler, so it's got a bit more blue in it. So the white's kind of shifted it slightly towards the blue side. Now I'm going to add quite a bit more white into there. Oh, maybe that was too much. Oh well, we'll keep going. One difficulty I've had, not a difficulty, but just knowing how much white to add into things to um, to alter the tones of the colour. I'm going to make that darker. I'm going to paint that all darker. Right, and now a bit more white in there. For this last one, I think I'm going to start from the bottom up. I'm going to start with the white and just add a tiny hint of that colour into it. And then I want one in between. There we go. So if you're using watercolour, it's really common just to add more and more water to get lighter and lighter and lighter. And adding more and more water on, on, on the gouache did make it lighter, but not considerably. So um, so this is kind of that had a lot of water and very little paint in it, but still quite opaque. Whereas this, which is mainly white with a tiny little bit of that pigment in it, uh, is much is much lighter and you get a much greater range from light to dark. Uh, by using white than you do for with the water. Now I want to see how well it layers because one of the things about uh, gouache is that it's it's opaque so it layers over things really well so I just want to see how well it does. So the first uh, circle I'm going to draw some pencil lines in it. Uh, so this will be a really useful test if you want to do um, a sketch and then paint over it. How much of your pencil line will, be, will you be able to see once you've painted over? So I'm doing some horizontal lines in here and then I think I want to make it darker at the bottom so I'm going to do some quite dark colouring at the bottom in the pencil and then we'll add just a few more lines getting lighter as we go up so it's darker at the bottom and then gets lighter as we go up the circle. And then I've got some fine liner pens and I'm going to do the same on this one here. So I've got a nice fine, fine liner pen. 
and then I've got a much darker one here, a much thicker one. And then this one's got a brush tip, so it should give me a much thicker line at the bottom. The other thing I want to see is I want to see how well gouache layers over gouache. So I'm going to do the same stripes uh, in a nice dark purple and paint them in with uh, my fine brush. I'm going to allow these to dry completely and then see how the paint layers over it. I need a bit more water in there. So I'm going to wait for that to dry before I paint over it, but I can do these two here. Let's use this puddle I've already got mixed up here, this mid kind of purpley plum colour. And we will paint over this circle here. Actually, I think I don't have quite enough colour there. Let's try that again. Okay. So now I'm going to paint all over the pencil and I've got that nice kind of creamy mid consistency where it's got some water to it but not, it's not like a wash down here. And I don't know if you can see that but well, I can't see that. Um, I can't see any of my pencil lines at all. So that's really opaque. It's really covered all of those over completely. Let's use the same one on here. Another thing that I found between going from uh, watercolour to gouache is that um, I'm used to just naturally taking extra water and adding it into puddles of paint on my palette and then adding it to what's on the page and spreading it out a little bit more. But when you do that with gouache, it just changes the consistency of the paint on the um, the paint on the page and it doesn't really it doesn't really work. So I keep I keep doing the same thing and finding it doesn't work. But yeah, so I've got this little puddle of paint here and my inclination, and, and I don't think I've got enough to paint this last circle, my inclination is just, oh, I'll just add some more water into it. But that's going to make it really, um, really too transparent for this test. So when I get to that point, I need to mix up more of that colour. Another thing I found is that um, washing my brush so often transfers more and more water onto the palette then that mixes with the paint and make, makes it too wet, really. Now, these stripes that I put down here have all dried. Um, so I'm going to paint over them. And the paint I've got on here is maybe a little bit too, a bit too wet, a bit too transparent. What's happening here is that I can still see some of those stripes underneath. Um, I'm getting like the the ghost of those stripes um, kind of showing through a little bit. But also as I'm working the uh, paint to try and get rid of them, I'm finding that it's actually blending with the colours underneath. So the stripes that I put underneath um, have started changing the colour on the top. Having said that, it is possible to keep blending them until you've kind of blended them away completely. This circle here that I've painted, I can see the fine liner underneath. Um, so there's the opaque paint is over the top, but I can still see where those um, where those pen lines are, and they're much more and they are more obvious on the the bottom half of the circle where um, the darker pen was. For my next row here, I'm going to try different methods of blending. 
that. I'm going to paint some stripes on this one. Top stripe, pretty much white, tiny bit of that plum that was already on my brush when I picked up the white paint. And I'm just going to put that in a nice stripe along the top. Clean my brush and then move on to the next colour. And I've got a stripe here of like a slightly darker colour. And as I've put them next to each other, they have run a bit. So maybe that's a sign that um, these are wetter than I thought they were. All right, let's go for this one. Whee. That's interesting. That's an interesting effect. It's similar to the effect you get in watercolour, where the colours kind of blend into one another. And I think you could do something really interesting with that. I'm going to have to mix up another like dark plummy patch here. And put that on the bottom. Whee! Yeah, that's really interesting. I really like that effect. Wasn't what I intended, but I like it. Okay, I'm going to try the second one and I'm going to try a little bit more smooth blending. So I'm going to take some of my white and put it at the top. Well, white with a bit of purple in it. Kind of a mid-tone in the middle. And then that dark tone at the bottom. And I think I've got a bit too much water in there again. And then this time, let's mix up a bit more of that. Try and make it a bit more opaque. There we go. And then this time I'm just going to move my brush backwards and forwards from the bottom up to the top and the top down to the bottom. Let's introduce a little bit more white to the top and do that again. The clean, damp brush, I'm going to do a little bit more blending. A bit more of that dark in the bottom and blend that up. And I'm just trying to keep going while it's all still wet and get a nice smooth blend. It does take a little bit of work as you can see. And it's not exactly 100% smooth. You can see a few little lines in there. But I think for like a sunset or something like a, you know, graduated sky, that could be quite a nice effect. And then this one, I'm going to try and blend the colours together a bit more like you'd do if you were doing an acrylic painting. So I'm going to do like a, a sphere. So I've got a little highlight here. I'm going to paint slightly darker stripes of colour around there. Let's have most of the body of this sphere as that kind of purpley colour. Bit of a shadow around the bottom. And then 
do some of that blending while that paint's still a bit wet. Start again. Oops. Too much, too much plum on there. Right in the middle again. And blend that out. And this one, you can see the brush strokes a little bit more than you could in here. And then for this row, I want to try layering things over the top of, uh, of the gouache. So I'm going to mix up um, some more of that colour. And I'm going to paint these three here uh, and then leave them to dry and then come back and try different things over the top of them. Okay, these three are now dry, so I'm going to um, just mess with them and paint stuff over the top. So the first one is my dirty water, really. Um, it's, it doesn't have to be dirty. I just thought I'd see what would happen if I painted water onto what I've already painted and then take some of my paper towel and just see if I can lift it. So yeah, you do get some like spotty effects. It hasn't lifted like particularly evenly, it's a little bit smudgy, but if you wanted to get a texture on something that could work quite nicely. I'm going to try layering some wet gouache on this side. The darker one. And what happens is that I'm putting the darker colour on, but it's lifting the colour underneath. So I'm getting something that's kind of in the middle, but it's not as dark as the paint that I'm trying to put on. And it can end up looking a little bit streaky. With this one, I'm going to try and do some details. So I've got some white gouache here and a very fine brush and I'm going to paint some horizontal lines. Oh, a bit more water. So I am able to get a fair bit of definition there and um, because I'm not kind of messing around with it too much I think it's it's working quite nicely. Let's try that again with the dark colour. So some darker gouache here. Let's try some darker stripes. And yeah that's going on quite nicely. This one, I've got some other things. So I've got some Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. So let's just try a bit of that. And that's gone on really nice. You can see that, well, I don't know if you can see, but I can see that this stripe here looks like pure white. These ones up here look kind of lilac-y. Try it again. So yeah, so that's looking really nice and white and bright. And then these are the two white pens that came top in my white pen test on watercolour. So I'm going to try them on here too. So this is the Signo um, Uniball Gel Pen in Broad. And that is giving me tram lines. It's not brilliant. Hmm. Yeah, that's not great. This one's the uh, the Posca acrylic marker. Let's try that. Oh, a bit of activating. So yeah, 
and again sort of looking a bit lilac-y, not terribly bright white. The PH Martins definitely came out the best out of the, all of those, but it is nice that you can layer lighter coloured um, gouache on top of the darker colour. So this is my messy page of, uh, of gouache experiments. It'll be interesting to know if you've come from watercolour and then tried gouache, if you found similar things to me. So yeah, so it's hard to get the like the water to paint ratio right. That's a complex kind of calculation. And also how much white to add into um add into the colour to get you the the uh the shade that you want. I'm really quite pleased with how this uh this blended um one has come out. Uh, when I was doing it, it had a few little brush strokes in it, but they seem to have sorted themselves out. It's looking really nice and smooth now. This one here is giving me some really interesting effects that I wasn't expecting. Um, all of those kind of bleeds and runs, which I'd associate more with watercolour, um, but it's giving me really lovely vibes that I could, re you know, I could see using in a painting somehow. If you use a lot of water with your gouache, you can get the similar kind of effects that you get with watercolour. So there's a, a lovely kind of um, bloom there, uh, and you can see the rivulet, rivulets, rivulets of water as it's kind of run through the paint. Um, it's kind of darker than it would be if you'd done, say, an equivalent thing with watercolour, um, but uh, that could be a really useful effect. So yeah, it's really useful to be able to paint lighter colours on top of darker ones, which you can't with watercolour. Um, uh, another difference is that uh, these colours all dry darker, so when you mix them up, uh, watercolours tend to dry lighter, so when you put them on they're really vibrant, and then when you 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 know you leave it for an hour and you come back to it and you go, oh, it doesn't look as bright and pretty as I thought it did. Uh, these kind of do the opposite, so they um, they start lighter and then they dry darker. So yeah, so that takes a bit of getting used to too. Yeah, I definitely want to do a little bit more experimenting with these and uh, doing the project this week that I'm going to be sharing on Friday. Uh, this has been a really useful exercise for that to help me get different effects that I'm going to use in that project. So have you tried gouache? Do you like it? Uh, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, let me know in the comments below. If you've liked today's video, then please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more from me, then do subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to seeing you again in another video very soon. Bye-bye.